So let's actually get started. One of the first things you're going to want to do, if you haven't actually accessed GPT-4 just yet and you don't know how to, go on to ChatGPT and make sure that if you are on ChatGPT, you do need to have ChatGPT Plus because if you don't have ChatGPT Plus, then you won't be able to access GPT-4. Now, one of the cool things that you can see about GPT-4 is that there's three different versions that you have access to if you have access to GPT-4. Now, I do want to make some key differences here because there is a lot to get through in this video and there is going to be some things that you might have missed. So there are now three versions of ChatGPT. So of course we got the default version of ChatGPT, which is available to plus users. So if you've purchased the $20 a month subscription, you'll be able to get this version right here. And you can see the reason that this one is really good is because it is really, really fast, almost double um, or three times the speed of the legacy version. So the legacy version that you can all see right here, this is essentially just the free version. So if you haven't signed up for GPT Pro or GPT Plus yet, you're not gonna be able to see GPT-4 or you're not gonna be able to see default version of GPT 3.5. So understand that that is why you may not see these two tabs here. So once you upgrade your subscription and then you'll see the tab for GPT 4 and you'll see the tab for GPT 3.5. Now what's interesting about this is that GPT 3.5 we need to make an important distinction because GPT 3.5 is actually faster than GPT 4. So you can see right here the speed on GPT 4 is only 2 but on 3.5 you can see that it's a five on the speed. So the 3.5 version is actually really, really quick. So if you are wanting to get data out of ChatGPT really, really fast, just use the default version of 3.5 because it is magnitudes faster than GPT-4. So GPT-4, okay, as you all know, is actually very, very slow. So GPT-4 is just as quick as the legacy version of ChatGPT and it's actually slower than you'd expect. Now, most people would think this version that would be really quick, but that is not the case. So that is something that you do want to note. Another thing to note about ChatGPT is that it does currently have a message cap of 100 messages every four hours. So this is something that you want to understand. So for example, when you're sending these messages, try to understand that you can't just keep on sending messages for a big project just yet because they are slowly rolling this out. And I'm guessing that as they do roll this out, so you ought to know that GPT-4 isn't going to allow you to send too many messages in a specific time frame because I'm guessing that they want to limit the usage of this platform. Now, if there are some tips and tricks that are missing in this video be sure to comment down below and i'll see if i can get to those comments and potentially make another video on this stuff because there's definitely a lot to cover and there will be updates to this as the developments continue so of course you can see that there are many things that you should know about gpt4 gpt4 doesn't really allow you to create a code prompt with uh, more than 2,000 words you know currently we did see this that was you know something that was advertised but this is going to be something that is reserved for the api so if you've ever used gpt before or if you've ever used open eyes oh that's not there. Or if you've ever used OpenAI's Playground, this is going to be where you're going to be using GPT-4 in the future. And this is where the long form content creation is going to be. So if you're someone who's online right now thinking, okay, I want to use GPT-4 to create eBooks. I want to use it to create essays. I want to use it to create many different things. Understand that right now in its current state, GPT-4, you can't actually do that because you can see right here, it says GPT-4 is capable of handing over 25,000 words of text, allowing for use cases like long form content creation, extended conversations, and documentation document search analysis, but um, this Reddit user showed that after inserting a code prompt with about 2,000 words, they said the message you submitted was too long. Pre please reload the conversation and submit something shorter. So right now, guys, ChatGPT, understand that you're not able to submit insanely long things and have it analyze them, but that is something that is going to be happening. And of course, the GP, uh, GPT-4 API waitlist on this page right here, it's called openai.com slash waitlist slash GPT-4 um, API. Uh, just sign up here and just simply wait. And eventually, um, once you're accepted, once they actually roll it out, that's when you can head over to Playground. And then essentially what you want to do is you just want to switch switch the model. Um, and then of course, uh, once you have the model, which is going to be the chat right here, um, that's where you're going to be able to have um, that long form content on. So it's definitely on Playground. It's not on ChatGPT. Now, some of you might be wondering, another thing you might be wondering is where are the images support? Image support is coming around, but they haven't actually released this just yet. So this is something that they have worked on with something that they have shown us, but this isn't something that has hasn't been released just yet. So if you're looking for an image button right here or an image button right here or one in Playground, this isn't something that we have yet. So, you know, your, your chat GPT isn't bugged out. This is something that we haven't got just yet. So some people have actually been using chat GPT to develop many, many crazy things. Okay. So for example, chat GPT, especially GPT-4 has gotten really, really good at making code. In fact, it's gotten so good that many different coders are now starting to create these mini projects with them. And you can see right here that this guy tweeted out, with GPT-4's help and no previous coding experience, I just 
just made my first Google Chrome extension in a few hours. GPT-4 walked me step by step through the entire creation process, writing the code and fixing all errors that came up. The simple extension translate, translates the text of any web page pirate into pirate speak by using the GPT-3 API and the prompt Ahoy matey. So it's definitely really cool because um, as you guys know, GPT-3 was something that people did use to create code. But as you know, that GPT-4 has become advanced. So for example, let's say I wanted to, and this is something that I did before, um, create... Um, this is something that you can get really, really experimental with. Let's say, let's create a Pine script for a trading bot. Um, and this is something that I did a video on before, ages ago. So here you can see uh, GPT 3.5 using ChatGPT to uh, create code. So this was me, uh, like I think a month ago, trying to create code. So essentially, uh, ChatGPT now, GPT 4, has gotten much, much better at creating code. And it's definitely having a lot less errors. So I'm going to go ahead and see what it does with this new prompt because it will be interesting to see just how um, different this is. I'm going to go ahead to GPT 4 and I'm going to see. And what you guys want to see right here is you want to see just how slow this is. Now, of course, if you're someone who's used to to turbo um you understand that of course this is definitely slower but if you're used to the legacy version then this is going to be something that is of course uh the standard speed so this is essentially what we have here which is like a, a pine script trading bot that you can actually use on trading view if you know what trading view is you can just simply input this into the pine script editor and you can actually use this um to make a trading bot for yourself as a buy and sell signal um indicator and this is something that chat gpt can actually be used for um and it's actually something that does pretty much work so you can see right here that chat gpt is actually much better at code. Now, for those of you who are wondering exactly how smart ChatGPT is, there's a recent article by Forbes just detailing exactly how ChatGPT beats 90% of lawyers trying to pass the bar. And this is something that is real because I did cover this in uh, yesterday's video. So it is something that is actually true. ChatGPT uh, is very, very smart. Okay. Um, and of course, there are going to be some times where you do get some errors. But uh, if you do have any errors, you can just simply input those errors into ChatGPT and then it will essentially recorrect those errors. So it's definitely good at creating code. And this is going to be something that um, is much more smart. OK, um, and you can see right here what's different about this one. OK, is that it actually walks you through step by step. It gives you much more thoughtful responses and uh, it's just generally a lot better and a lot more refined. Now, what you can also see here is that this user was able to get GPT-4 to make them an iPhone app that recommends five new movies every day including the trailers and where to watch and you can see that this app actually did work now of course you might be wondering how difficult is this to do understand that if you don't know how to code guys you can literally just ask chat gpt how to get started with any app with any program and it will literally give you the step-by-step -step tutorial and this is something that i've done before and the code that i did just write is actually pretty perfect i didn't receive any errors when applying it to my trading view whereas the previous version of chat gpt there was always constant errors that i would have and it would take maybe around five eight Eight tries before you could actually get um you know the, the right code and this time it actually did get it correctly now though this might not be something that you do want to use chat gpt can be used to create very very basic games um that you can see that you can play in your browser and of course you guys can see right there all you need to do is literally ask chat gpt what kind of game you want to create and then simply it will output that code and you can create those basic games in your browser now you might think that this this application isn't that impressive but guys understand that this can do this within seconds accurately with uh uh, you know, a high degree of accuracy and a high degree of, you know, certainty, meaning that, you know, these applications can be used on many different programs and in many different fields. Okay. This is just, you know, a demonstration of how powerful the software is. And this is definitely something that you do want to play around with. Maybe you have an app idea. Maybe you have something that you've wanted to code. Maybe that you've, you know, you have a concept in your brain. Um, ChatGPT can help you bring that to life, especially if you have no coding knowledge. Now, one of the key features that they did actually, you know, give a demo of was the fact that, uh, uh, let's say you went on to default, default GPT 3.5, even the turbo version, and you said, can you write uh, a sentence about AI? A chat GPT would simply refuse this. Um, and sometimes it would actually make mistakes. Um, for example, if you ask for a paragraph, in fact, let's ask for a paragraph because it's not supposed to be able to do that. Um, uh, let's see if we have a paragraph. Can you write a paragraph? Well, you can see that it does try to do it, okay? But um, it does get it kind of wrong because this is an A, this is the letter D, this is the letter M, this is the letter H. Um, so it does try, but if we ask GPT-4, GPT um, you can see that it does it more accurately. So if I say, can you write a paragraph about AI with all words beginning with the letter A, it should get this actually right. So you can see right here, the GPT-4 is much more smarter. It's like 
a degree, a couple degrees smarter. So you can see right here, artificially advanced algorithms are autonomously accelerating astounding analysts alike. So um, that's really, really, really impressive um, for a natural language model. Um, and yeah, guys, honestly, this is just truly, truly incredible. It just goes to show that, um, you know, right here, it, it tries, but it doesn't get it. And then of course you can see that right here, um, it actually does get it um, and it does get it with a perfect degree of accuracy. There's there's not one um, word, which is, you know, another letter. So it just goes to show that GPT-4, maybe if you tried something before and it wasn't that accurate and it wasn't that great, um, or maybe you thought that it was a bit too difficult, try it with GPT-4 and you'll see that it is definitely uh, magnitudes more precise, magnitudes more specific, and it's more concise in its efforts to, you know, give you a specific answer because it doesn't need to, you know, blabble on about uh, a lot of stuff. Now, another thing that chat GPT is really, really good for is, uh, I wouldn't say generating lawsuits because that's not something you want to do, but uh, definitely the law and definitely taxes. So in the OpenAI demo, what we did actually see was, uh, you know, GPT-4 doing taxes, which it really did in a very, very good way. So GPT-4, as you guys can see right here, um, this is by the OpenAI demo, um, actually did manage to do this person's taxes. So um, of course, as you guys can see, they were on playground. They were in uh, the chat beta mode. And you can see that right here, they said, uh, you are uh, tax GPT. And this is why I said the steerability of uh, GPT-4 is going to be insane. This is why it's not just going to be chat GPT anymore, where it's going to be something that you're going to be talked to. You could literally make it applicable to any single industry in the entire world. So I could make it a YouTube consultant. I could make it a healthcare consultant. I could make it a music uh, consultant. Uh, as you can see right here, they're making it a tax consultant and it accurately does solve um, the taxes. So it says, um, you know, he did actually paste in the tax above. Um, there, was, there were so many uh, details that he added. Um, and then of course, at the end, it outputted the right tax liability. So when it comes to math questions, GPT-4 is going to be really, really good. Um, and you should still be able to do this with uh, GPT-4 right now in chat GPT. So this is definitely something that I would say that, you know, maybe you're having a difficult uh, email, maybe you receive an email, you're not sure how to respond. Uh, GPT-4 is going to be able to give you the very best um, convincing emails that you can write. So definitely use this uh, for, for very, very uh, difficult things. Um, and I know that might seem basic, but um, honestly, just using it and integrating it to my daily work flow really did just just make me a, a a more efficient person and i was honestly surprised at how good this was at just doing some of the basic tasks 10 times more effective than i could think of so if you're someone who's uh you know used gpt4 and you're wondering what to do you can use it to def definitely check code you can use it to do your taxes and other stuff like that you can use it to uh, help you with the law because remember that gpt4 is actually really good at the law it's actually good enough to get into stanford and many different law schools so you can think of it like having your personal law assistant so with this this stuff gpt4 is a step up so now it actually has i wouldn't say it has qualifications but i would say that it is good enough to advise you and of course you definitely want to you know of course always seek an attorney for a final decision but it is definitely something that can advise you in areas of the law that you may not be um you know that you may not know about so um it's definitely something that i would be using and with gpt4 there aren't any really crazy prompts of course you can prompt it in uh, many different ways but it just goes to show that now it's so much more specific so i would get even more specific with your prompts because that's what gpt4 is clearly designed for um and when the multimodal function does come out when there's like a little um a little box here when you can input an image or maybe um on playground when you go onto open ai and you go on playground if you change this to chat um and then if you switch this to gpt4 when it does come available um when they do release the api you're going to be able to see exactly um how crazy gpt4 is because it's going to be able to generate that long form content so i would make sure right now what you do is you definitely um get your api key and you definitely sign up for the waitlist because uh once it does release there's definitely going to be a lot of people using it um and you definitely want to be the first